we are the fastest to resolve people's issues. And sometimes we can be so engrossed with solving people's issues and building a popular image, reputation, whereas we are dying on the inside. I'm intoxicated by the power in that name. That name is more powerful than neutron bomb, more powerful than chemotherapy. That name is more powerful than radiotherapy. I've seen the name work. This is the Transforming Church International. One church making global impact. This matter is so serious, sir, that I will never forget the last meeting we had with Bill Hybels. Many of you know Bill Hybels? That's the man behind the Global Leadership Summit. I'm sure many of you know about Global Leadership. It's a global program for leaders. When the last, I was in the last meeting where Bill Hybels spoke, what was he talking to us about? He was talking to us about the inner life of a leader. That the major reason why leaders have problems is because of unresolved issues in their personal life. We are the fastest to resolve people's issues. And sometimes we can be so engrossed with solving people's issues and building a popular image, reputation, whereas we are dying on the inside. He started talking to us about how the X in our subconscious controls the Y in our conscious realm. How the unresolved issues in our life can start affecting even our leadership. Shortly after that was when the news broke out, barely a few months after, that himself actually had the issue. A leader of leaders also had, we cried, it broke our heart, but it sent all of us back home. If at the peak of ministry, at that zenith, if a man could have to come back to address self-leadership, personal issues, Please, I beg you, heights will be attained, but the question is, will they be sustained? You are investing so much energy to attain heights. Wise people are investing so much energy to sustain. People are constantly praying now, Father, search me and see. If there be anything in me that will bring me down tomorrow, take it now. Don't take me to heights you won't keep me in. Delay my rising until you find me qualified for the next level. We want to blow. So when you are blown, what is left? I would rather grow than blow. From the World Bank, Strauss World Bank at the peak there, sir. Only for you to find out a man at the helm of World Bank was reduced to nothing on the account of sleeping with hotel maids. At that level. Please beware. Let him that think it is standard take heed, lest he watch her. Leaders, our problems are inside. We are bleeding and we are leading. We are the only ones that counsels everybody but have no counselor. We are the ones that everybody talks to but we talk to nobody. We are the only ones covered in shame when we are dealing with pain. We can't talk because uh, our title has clouded us up in pride. How do, I, how do I walk up to Pastor John and say I'm having this challenge? Won't he say a whole you? Where there's a difference between the man and the office. The office is perfect. The man is not. For we have this treasure. Where sir? In earthen vessels. My question is, how, it's not how fast are you running? My question is, 
Will you stay long running this fast? Two, when you get there, will you last there? Over and over again, we find out that the leader's challenge is internal. David, you remember our uncle David? Sir, he had conquered Amalekites, Ziklag, he has conquered everywhere. Invincible guy. David never lost the battle. Amazing guy, just doing exploits. It was so serious that David got to a point where there was no really serious battles to fight. He could send men out. The Bible says, and when kings went to war, David just stood on top of the roof. I was, was like, man, look, look what God has done for me. Does anybody know that song? See what the Lord has done for me. Oh. David was singing it on top of his roof. Ah. It, and David said, what is this? He saw Bathsheba taking a bath. And then we realize the weakness of the warrior. The weakness of the warrior found expression. Bring her to me. In between bring her to me, David could have called himself to order. But the weakness within was stronger than his resistance. She came. David slept with her. And that became a spiral a downward spiral path from sleeping with her. The next thing was how to plot to kill her husband. From there, how do I marry her? Can you see how David just kept going? And from that moment onward, it was an irrecoverable path for David. He was king, but that was the highest attainment. Is it possible that David could have accomplished much more than being a king? Was it possible that God had a global plan for David than just being the king of Israel? As I talk with you, I talk with trepidation. And I speak with you with all humility. I am begging you. I am begging you. We are tired of seeing leaders fall and break the heart of children. Children are losing faith in pastors. Children are losing faith in leaders. Today... Is this pastor? Tomorrow is that bishop? Tomorrow is that one? And children are saying, There's no need to go to church. Why? Because we are too gift focused, power focused. Three things work together person, principles, and power. Power is a gift, power is a reward for faith. Is that okay? But there's something God won't do for you that is developing your person. And your person determines the longevity of the expression of power. This one is in vogue. You too, you want to be in vogue. Why show up before your time? Celebrate everybody. Spend time investing in yourself. Your season will come. Let me share this with you. Moses was well educated in Egypt. He was exposed. But there was a problem we noticed about Moses. Moses was a man that was secretly very fearful. He had secret fears. Very, very, he was very fearful. It was so bad, sir, that, that he just assumed that Pharaoh will get to know what he did. And he left an entire nation before accusation came. There, there was no need for memo to, there was no need for inquiry. No need to invite him. At least wait. Let them invite you. And then maybe when you notice there's an indictment coming, you can run. Moses did not wait for that. Moses took off, left an entire city, ran away, and went into quietness for 40 solid years. 
Secret fears. I'm talking to leaders. We appear bodacious on the outside. But nobody knows how secret fear kills us within. The world will never have known. If Pastor Matthew never said it. Pastor Matthew has said, for years, people kept on inviting Pastor Matthew to Nigeria, to other parts of the world to preach. He would say, no, 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 the schedule is very busy. Until one day he opened up. After he had conquered it. Pastor Matthew said, I had the fear of what's that? Flying. That's why I rejected. But when he conquered it, KICC came to Africa. Is it possible that you've not gone as far as you should go because of secret fears? I feel a burden to pray for you. I almost feel like praying for you right now. Secret fears. Fear of the unknown. Fear of, fear of, fear of, just fear. It paralyzes your initiative. It discomfits you personally. Disarms you. Renders you useless. Destroys your initiative. Fear of death. If I go to answer the invitation on my way, I hope sure the plane will not crash. Won't there be a road accident? Won't they kidnap me? Secret fears. Thank you, Father. When the Lord appeared to Moses, and I'm beginning to bring it to a close here. When the Lord appeared to Moses, please follow me carefully. When the Lord appeared to Moses, I'm talking to you about unleashing the leader within you. And it was time for God to bring out the leader in Moses. God said, Moses, I have a big assignment for you. I'm speaking to you, ma'am. God has a big assignment for you. I'm speaking to you, sir. God has a big assignment for you. God wants to use you to accomplish great and significant things. And the next thing Moses said, which I love, many will not. Moses said, my father. He said, who am I? He said, I don't think of myself to be anybody worth what you're calling me to do. Gideon had the same thing. When God said to Gideon, the mighty man of valor, Gideon said, Lord, who am I? I'm from the smallest family in the smallest town. Everything about us is small. And there are people under the sound of my voice. What God wants to do through you has been limited by the leash of small thinking. The leash of small thinking. The leash of small thinking. How can I do that kind of a thing? Well, it's not you that will do it. It is God that is at work in us. Both to will and to what my do of his good pleasure. I'm too small. And God conquered that. And Moses began to like, memories of my past failure. I failed before. Let me ask a question here so that we can have comfort in the house. If you've ever failed before, raise your hand small. Small. Not, not, uh, uh. <laughs> Some people are raising too. <laughs> Tammy. <laughs> it should be small. Tammy is raising two hands. How many of you are, see, how many of you have failed before? Before. God bless you, ma'am. I'm raising my own two hands. Okay, in case you don't understand the question I'm asking, how many of you have ever failed work before? Work. I'm not saying you failed. They gave you P. They gave you F. Amen. Okay. For those of you that passed at one sitting, God bless you. How many of you have failed jump, jump before? Real jump. Raise your hand. What that means is that you, you to give your best but they gave you a bad score. Raise your hands. Amen. You know how many brilliant people we have in this church that they gave bad, bad results? <laughs> so you get a good result, you say, see what I got. They give what, you score bad, say, see what they gave me. Adam issues continue. Hello. How many of us went after the failure you had? How many of us went beyond that? Particularly secondary school, jam, failure. How many of you went beyond that to the university? How 
What does that tell you? You can fail forward. You can do what? Fail forward. Failure is not an end. Write it down. Failure is not an end, but an opportunity to start all over again intelligently. Failure is not an end, but an opportunity to start all over again intelligently. Failure simply means that the variables of success were not properly factored in. You did not factor in all the variables of success. Missing out one of the variables did not make the equation of success to be balanced. So failure is a feedback. Telling you to go back and put the variables in place. <laughs> so you can go from failure to a great success. Never let your past be dictating and deciding your future. Hello, Mark, can I say something here? A young man came to me and said, Pastor, look at what I graduated with. I studied this course, zoology. He said, but there's no more zoos in Nigeria too. <laughs> And even the zoos that are left, the animals don't like to stay there. And those who take care of the zoo too, don't like to stay there. So pastor, what do I do? I said, don't die as a mistake. If you study zoology and there's no future for zoology, you are young. Move into something else. Don't die as a mistake because you made a mistake. You are not a failure because you failed. Failure is an event. It's not a person. Don't be defined by what didn't work. Rise above it. I started ministry before. It failed. I started ministry before. Pastor, I haven't tried. It's not the pastor, I beg. I'm not doing it again. Hello. We don't try before you no know, work. Pastor, we just keep moving from place to place. We have moved from places to places. Are you hearing me? There's nothing new. Be inspired. Moses. I want you to come and lead my people. He said, God, I don't think someone like me can make it happen. Self-doubt. Write it down. Self-doubt. Somebody needs to be unleashed from self-doubt. I don't think me, I can do it. I don't think I can accomplish it. I don't have capacity to make it happen. How, do, do I think someone like me can, 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 can do something like that? Self-doubt. It's a leash. And once it's on you, you can't accomplish great things. Self-doubt. Self-doubt. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. You, you know, one of the things, one of the things that touches my heart so strongly about self-doubt is that it's driven by poor self-image. How do you see yourself? How do you see yourself? You can't see yourself less and do more. Write that down. You can't see yourself less and accomplish more. I came to tell you, yeah, you are more than how you see yourself. And nothing is limiting you as a leader like self-doubt. That's why you've not done so much. I don't have enough money. Whoever has. Ask those who are here. When we were building this, there was no money in our account. Two, God said we should not raise money. Three, God said we should not call any member for money. Four, God said we should not bring any speaker to come and raise money. 
So how do you get money? We are in the building right now. We are in the building. Self-doubt. My father, Bishop Abiru, said something to me. He said, Sam, he said, I want you. He said, this, this place is too small. I said, Daddy, too small. <laughs> said, Do you know what it took us? Eh? How many years? <laughs> Thank you, guys. How many years? We kept jumping around looking for Latma. Pastor John and I entered Guarimpa once. We never saw ourselves ever coming to Guarimpa. We've always thought of airport road. When Dr. Paul Leneche now went to airport road, shortly after he came to minister in our church, we say, how come somebody now found the land for us on the airport road? We say, how can we go to the airport road where Dr. Paul Leneche is present? We consider it a matter of honor. So I spoke to Apostle Good. I said, sir, we are giving up the land on the airport road because of Dr. Paul. Where do we then get a land? Pastor John and I came to somewhere. They said we should come and look at one land in the corner, corner shop or something. We got to that place. I think it was a 1,000 square meter or so. 1,000 square meter. Madam, that time, we said, how much is the land? How much would they pray? No, huh? no, it was more than that. About 20 or something like that. The one by the corner shop. When they mentioned the amount of the land, Pastor John and I, when we got there first, Pastor John said, Kuri Amosure. What did that something song you spoke? <laughs> Pastor John spoke in tongues, making me believe we have gotten to the place. When they told us the amount, I didn't hear another tongue from Pastor John. Not another tongue. The tongues went back to where they came from. <laughs> we were begging them we said if they can give us for 16 uh, we, bring it, we brought it down a bit if they had said bring the money they would see our break light because it was by faith we couldn't afford it then is that okay sir it was after that we were never thinking this way Somebody met us in town where we we're having fellowship. I said, sorry, pastor, I hear this church is looking for a land. I have a place for you. But I don't know if you would like to go there. I said, anywhere now, even if it's a dustbin. Because pastor, pastor Isaiah showed me a place. He said, we should go and look for another. He said, there's another one. And I followed pastor Isaiah. When we landed in the place, it was a dump site. And pastor Isaiah started giving me vision how we will convert this <laughs> With your eyes us here. Yeah. Is this encouraging somebody here today? We left that and then we got here. We couldn't even enter here. Everything you see here, from here to the road, we cleared everything. The gutters, the road, we did everything. We could only stop at the main road. And the woman said the land is somewhere. She didn't even know where her land was. By the time we got here, there were ditches all over this place. We filled up everything. Transformed the place. And now lands are going for multi-millions here. Just when we're to rest, we have gotten approval for two-story buildings. I mean, two sets of seven-story buildings. We're building a 10,000 seat auditorium here. Seven-story buildings to connect at the third floor. Approvals ready. And then Bishop said to me, he said, son, he said, if you do that, you'll be landlocked. He said, the Lord is showing me a place bigger than where you are. He said, go and look for a place. Bigger. I said, place? I said, sir, it took years to get here. And then Pastor Matthew Ashimolo called me into his hotel room in Florida. He said, the Lord is showing me that I've never been to your church, but the Lord is showing me that your church is in a place and it's too small. He said, that's not your permanent place. Go and look for a bigger place. Sir, the first thing that will kick in is the memory of the struggles. Are you hearing me, leaders? The memories of how long I'm about to prophesy. The memory of how long it took us to get this one. 
am I going to spend another? Sir, if it took us those years, yes, the land the woman gave us, God now made us to buy more. So we are on a massive expanse of land here. But sir, it took years. So the question is, if it took me that long to have another 10, 15 years or 12 years to struggle for another land, but I just said, Lord, I believe. How could this man be seeing greatness in me and I'm not seeing it? Why am I talking to you like this? How many of you know why I'm talking to you like this? Because there's what, sir? I want to see the greatness in you. Do what? I want to see it unleashed. I want every power, force, holding you back to let you go. You are more than this. I said, Lord, how will it happen? And Bishop called me last. I said, go and look for that land. And I started calling everybody, please, I'm looking for the land. And he said, don't look for Hector. He said, look for Hectors. Sir, what? 6,000, 1,000 square meter, we couldn't raise money for Hector, what? Sir, nobody in my bloodline has ever done Hectors. He said, come here. And I came. And Bishop told me, kneel down. I knelt down. First he told me, he said, go round, go round Goshen. I went round Goshen. I drove back. And he said, kneel down before me. I said, yes, daddy. He said, have you seen what you desire here? I said, what I desire? I desire everything here. <laughs> he said, kneel down. And placed his hands on me. He said, father, give him everything I have and everything he desires. Whatever he has seen here that he desires, give it to him. That was it. With the blessing. He didn't give me money. Because that's the error of mentees. The mentor just said, let me fly. And he's not giving me wings. If a mentor tells you to fly, it's because he has seen wings. And we stepped out. I began to tell people, look for land, look for land. And then they will call me. They say, sir, we see so land. So, so, so please. I say, how much? <laughs> they say, 120 something million, million. 200 million, million. I say, I say, okay. I said, I'll come and check the land. Eh? We'll go there. I'm like, okay, fine. Thank you, Father God. Is this the place? No. And then finally, somebody, where's, where's Collins? I thought I saw Collins in the service today. Architect Collins. Okay. So he called me and he said, sir, there is a strategic place. And this place has been in contention for 10 years. Honorable, local government, uh, zonal leader, of lands, two contestants over a land. And nobody wants to sell. He said, but sir, God will give us grace. He said, we must own that, those lands. Hectares of lands. Expensive. Hello, sir. The very day, in the midnight, the Lord woke me up and he said, son, if you don't pursue that land, you will regret it. I woke up in the night. I said, Lord, what is this? He said, pursue it. I called the young man. Guess what? The young man had been awake all night praying for me. That God, don't let my pastor miss this land. When I called him in the morning, I said, can you help me do whatever you can for us to get this land? He went to meet the honorable. The honorable said, he called him. He said, the honorable said, you know what? Can you people get me the money today? He said, I will come from Niger State. He called me and said, my, pap my papa. He said, can we get the money today? I said, today, <laughs> today, today, not today, amen. I said, you know what, let's meet in the bank. And I said, Father, help us. We landed at First Bank, Guarimpa here. By the time I got there, the Honorable from Niger was ahead of me. I live in Dawaki before I got to the First Bank. The Honorable from Niger State was waiting for me with policemen, in case you misbehave today. <laughs> By the time we got into the hotel, the, host, the bank, God had pulled things together. And I took, I called the account and said, what do we have there? I'm not talking about some small millions, uh, not small money. And I said to accountant, what do we have now? He says, sir, we have enough to cover. I carry biro. Calm down. There's a way to write those kind of checks. 
I said, can I have a private office? This is how with all pleasures are. When bankers give you a private office. <laughs> so they gave me an office and I called the honorable assistant. I said, sit down. Then I called my guys who were around. I said, yeah, my lawyer. I said, yeah, come. I said, yeah, take us video. You know, there's a check you sign with picture. And we signed and they were doing video. And I enjoy, I slowly write the check. You don't rush when it gets to that moment. I wrote it slowly. Signed the check. And when we're to do handover, you don't just drop those kind of checks. There are checks you drop. I said, sir, can you stand up, sir? Can we shake hands? And they snapped us. Handed him over the check. Said, thank you so very much, sir. And the man took off and he left. But the challenge is that that land we got, there's one beside it. There's a commercial property. And we felt it would be dangerous if our church owns this one and doesn't own this commercial property. But we have just paid so much if we dare this one, where will the money come from? I called him. I said, we are going to call the man, the owner of, who is the owner of this one? They said, it's owner land and the man has withdrawn the paper from the, land, from the from society that is not selling that land. I said, we sell. I said, can you give me his number? I called him. I said, Ranka. I spoke outside to him. I said, Ranka Dede. I said, how are you, sir? <laughs> I said, it's me, it's pastor. I said, I just want to tell you, sir, that we're we interested in your land and God would like you if you give it to us. You know, so. <laughs> He said, Pastor Kai, it's very, very difficult. I said, I understand the difficulty. That's why I called you. He said, Pastor, you will give me time to think about it. I said, Sir, tomorrow morning I will call you. You help them make up their mind. The next day, sir, I got a call from my own person saying the man called him. I said, can we bring the money? Again, it's urgent. I said, Father, I've entered another urgent again. <laughs> This time around, we drove all the way. We must meet in Kubwa. So I drove all the way to First Bank in Kubwa. And as I sat down there, I was speaking to the manager. I said, Madam, God has to move. That was the woman that drove in here two Thursdays ago. And came, she said, Pastor, I have never met you personally until that day. But your ministry has blessed me. And the Lord said, after that meeting, the Lord said, I must tap into the grace on your life. What I saw that day. She said, I came to drop my car. I said, madam, are you very sure? Are you in your right senses? Is your husband aware of the thing? We sat down there. And Sir God pulled everything together. And we locked up the entire properties. Why did I share that with you? Look at my past. Look at my history. Who would have ever consulted with my history and think that something like this is in my, my future? Unleash. You can do much more than you are doing. I thought I'd won a trophy. So I went to meet Bishop Abiyo. I said, Daddy, praise the Lord. I said, sir, we now have hectares like you, Professor. He said, how many? <laughs> he said, how many hectares? I said, there are plenty of hectares. Look at them. He said, eh. he said, so what's your plan? I said, daddy, we want to meet. I said, we've even cleared the place. Because I want you to come and see. So we've cleared the entire place. We've done drone. He said, eh. so what's the next plan? I said, daddy, we're planning to build. Ah, he said, that's very good. He said, I know you know you not be happy with me again because I'm stretching you. Abby. Are you not happy that I'm stretching you? I said, I'm happy, sir. I don't know who is happy that they are stretching him. And he said, Sam, he said, you are not building now. He said, I want you to go back to that place. He said, every land around, behind, corner, corner. And he said, anything close to that place, buy it up. He said, this year, don't build. So there are fathers you don't want to have. Just when a man should be clapping for me. This is, sir, 
We are talking about in a month, God did what we could accomplish in years. And you are telling me it's not enough. I should, everywhere, corner, corner, I should. <laughs> Again, be it unto me according to your word. And I stepped out again. I called the same person. I said, is there another thing around there? Ah, he says, sir, there's this one going now. It's, there's this amount. As, that was just about a month ago. I said, really? It's available. Proof, 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 like that. We say, how much? Oh, they say, okay, fine. We say, father, again, you did it before. You can do it again. And boom, in two days, we locked up that. So in that area, on the right on the road, we have locked up multiple properties on that axis. See, you will never know from me if not because you came to this conference and I need to encourage you. See, there are revolutions that are not televised. Thank you guys, sit down. It's not everything people need to know. The only times we share them are for your encouragements. To let you know that you may have come from the guttermost. You can rise to the uppermost. Anything you can't see yourself accomplishing, you can never accomplish. Here's what I want to say to you. Get rid of past experience. Get rid of self-doubt. Beware of imposter syndrome. Nothing kills leaders like imposter syndrome. Apologizing for what God is doing through you. I'm teaching them every Thursday now, Bible studies, where Paul will open his mouth and say something like, he said the dispensation, this dispensation of grace was given to me. That's a statement of arrogance. That's how you think. But that is Paul saying to me, saying to you, listen, I should be bold enough to talk about what God is doing. That's why Paul said, I don't talk about what God does in other people's lives. I talk about what he's doing in my life. Glory be to God. Get rid of people's opinion if you want to be unleashed. People will say all kinds of rubbish. Hello, climb the horse. They will say you are wicked. Walk on the ground, they say you are stupid. There's absolutely nothing you will say, do that people will not have an interpretation for. Die, give yourself dying for human beings. They will say you didn't die well. You're not hearing me, ma. You give yourself like this, you die for people. Ah! They will say, Can you imagine oh, which kind of useless death? Why would you even die for people? Are like, you not know, in your senses? And there are some of us who are, who are opinion sensitive. You are hyper opinion. You want her to take a step. They say, huh? Hey, you brought it back. And since then, you have not taken another step. Raise your hand if you understand what I'm saying here. Really? Wave it at me. Wave it at the person next to you. Say we plenty. I know everywhere looks calm, but I know what I'm saying. Opinion. And there are some of you, what kills the leader inside you from finding expression is the opinion of people you value the most. Eh? Can you? And that's the, that's the end of it. Somebody say, I'm more than this. I didn't hear you say, I'm more than this. Nothing kills, nothing, nothing holds leaders back from expressing the fullness of their potential. Like soloism and isolation. Isolationism and soloism will hinder the full manifestation of your potential. Hello, sir. You may have the prophetic anointing, but there's a woman who alone can build a house on the wall you don't have. You are not hearing what I'm saying. Elisha, I know the prophetic anointing is on your life, but sir, you don't have a wall. There's a woman, a Shunammite woman, who has a wall that can build a house for you on it. Are you hearing what I'm saying, sir? It's in relationship that you get the benefit of other people. 
Look at how far you've come through just soloism. Imagine how far you would have gone if you embraced people in your life. I am a collect, I'm the collective expression of many people's investments. I won't be here today, sir, if Apostle Good had never looked at me at the early age and said, Sammy the Great. I said, who? I will not be here if Apostle Israel Abraham will not invite me in the days when there was nothing. He will invite me to his house every January for us to come and eat because there's nothing to eat. We are built for connection. Our life is a series of connection. People must play significant roles for you to come to the fullness of what God has called you to be. A mother must carry you in her womb. I don't care to know if you are God. A woman must, if you have something to do on earth, a woman must carry you in her womb. A man must nurture you. A man must watch over you. Somebody must protect you. Somebody must take you to the synagogue. Somebody will bat for you. Somebody must help you. I know you are anointed, but somebody must announce you. Write this down. You have gone as far as your relationships allowed. Your network is too small for the size of your dreams. Your current cycle of friends can power your future desires. The most they can do is keep you right where you are. The next season of your life will require the interplay of men and women you've never met before. Your capacity to embrace people of different editions will determine the multicolored nature of your destiny. Those that will take you to the next level are not just Nigerians. They are not just Cameroonians. People will play different roles from different races. How broad? What is the latitude of your accommodation for human beings? If I have anything to do in Florida, in Miami area, sir, there is somebody, sir, who is from the Latino community who does that for me, sir. Are you getting what I'm saying? I just need to give him a call. He will run all over the place to make sure things are done in Miami area. Sir, if I have anything to do in Cameroon, somebody had to call me from Cameroon yesterday. She said, Pastor, I need to talk with you. I said, what is it? She said, people want to send gifts to you. But sir, they are not able to send the gift. It's difficult. Cameroonians want to bless you, sir. But they don't know how to do it, sir. Because the account on the screen is difficult. Daddy, there's this thing to do. There's that thing to do. There's that one to do. And they can be given through that. I said, I never knew about it, sir. If I was waiting for you, Nigeria, you don't know what they do over there. That's how I will have become broke. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Help me look at your neighbor. Say to the person, you need more than the people around you now. Somebody has called me from California, San Francisco area. He said, Pastor, how are you doing, sir? I said, fine. He said, my pastor talked so much about how you've been a blessing to us. Our church can't wait for you to come to California. I said, well, I'm coming. And he said, Pastor, I hear you're having some challenges with Facebook. I said, yes, sir. He said, Pastor, I'm a Facebook expert. And I said, he said, what is the challenge? He said, Pastor, you don't worry, sir. He said, the Lord has just placed it on my heart, sir. I want to do something for you, sir. I'm going to give you Google Access, $10,000 worth. You don't need to pay for it at all. Every month, you're going to be having 10 thousand dollars worth adverts he said on my account he said pastor just link me up with your boys i'm gonna work with them i have never met him before but i have already said to myself my gates will be open continually that the gentiles may bring narrowism Soloism, isolationism, you know they take you far. People have gone farther because of the interplay of other people in their lives. Am I talking to somebody, sir? The mayor, the frankincense, the, the mayor, the frankincense, and all of that, sir, they will not be brought to you by the high priest. They are going to be brought to you by people that saw your star from afar. Can I shock you, sir? Pastor, how is it that those who are very close didn't see your star, but the two people who are very far? I'm preaching to men of God in the house. May God open to begin to open the space and cause men from afar to see your stars in the name of Jesus. Here's the 
that's what I want to say to you. I sat down with Dr. Mike Murdoch and we're talking with Dr. Mike Murdoch and Dr. Mike Murdoch said, Sam, he said, I see something about you. Haven't not said with me too long, but as a father, he could see. Dr. Mike Murdoch said, Sammy, he said, I see something about you. He said, when you get back home, he said, go back and shrink your inner cycle. Number two, he said, make sure you maximize your time. He said, number three, he said, I see that you are somebody who loves people and so you will give your time to people and then he made this statement. He said, some of the people that take the most of your time are the ones who give you the least in return. He said, go back and withdraw your time from such kind of people. They are wasting your life. Am I talking to somebody here? And he said to me, he said, Sammy, he said, God is going to start opening the aperture of your relationship. He said, be people friendly. Open up to different races. He said, different races will not come until your heart is open to different races. So, sir, we're talking about going to South Africa. They started calling us. Somebody called me and said, Pastor, I love your broadcast. He said, I've watched several broadcasts. He said, I'm the CEO of Spring Network South Africa. He said, I've been watching several prayer stuff. He said, but yours fall into my philosophy. A Bible-driven prayer. He said, Pastor, would you allow me to put your broadcast on my satellite TV? I said, sir, in my mind, again, talk to me now. This conversation that's about to begin is coming from where, sir? From my past. I said, sir, uh, he said, no, Pastor, you don't worry. Let me make it clear to you, sir. You are paying nothing. I said, what? He said, sir, you are paying nothing, sir. He said, if you want me to go live when you go live, I will go live when you go live. He said, but I'm suggesting that you allow me to go live 30 minutes after you go live so that the impact on South Africa can be much. They are just finishing and I'm starting. I said, sir, you are the media expert. I'm not. That's how the man started broadcasting. And the man had to carry one of their phones and drop. He said, pastor, the calls from South Africa, they are too much. Pastor, we can't become your receptionist here. I said, don't worry, sir. I will come to South Africa for conference. He said, Pastor, South Africa is not for conference. You are coming to start church here. I was in South Africa 2009, right? I was there for one month. When I came back, I called Pastor John. I said, my heart burns for South Africa. I sense we should plant a church there. And I was saying to him, you may likely even go there. Years after, in the wisdom of the sovereign God who lives in heaven. The man said, Pastor, you have to come and start church. South Africans are waiting for you. The next thing that hit my mind, ah, these South African people and their visa issue. I've never had a visa issue. But I was not thinking, how do I do it? And then last Sunday, was it last Sunday? Was last Sunday now? Seated right here, ma, was the woman in charge of all visa issues for the whole of South African Embassy in Nigeria, seated right there. And the woman in charge of the entire visa application for the whole of Russia from South Africa, seated here. After service, they walked up to me and they called me Papa. Papa. I said, come, I would like to visit your country. Say, Papa, that any time now, just let us know. Unleash. Unleash. The world is waiting for you. Take off the limits. Take off the fears. Take it off. You are more than this. You are more than this. Please, as you remain standing on your feet, let me say this. The reason some of you have not been unleashed. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We're going to pray here now. I need to get a word when Apostle is around. I need to listen to me. There are people under the sound of my voice. You could have done much more than what you are doing. But every time you want to do something, there's a dream. There's a vision. There are vision carriers under the sound of my voice. The only problem is money. You always say, money. There's no money. So you keep dropping ideas because there's no money. You keep dropping ideas because there's no money. God, you know what God is saying to me? You are waiting for the Red Sea to part before you put your feet. But you know what? You know what the Lord is saying? I should tell you. Put your feet into your Jordan and you will see me split the sea. Mama, it's time to birth that vision. Hello, Ma. It's time to birth what God has put on the inside of you. 
It is called provision, not prevision. It doesn't come before the vision. It comes after the vision. It comes with the vision. Am I talking to somebody in the house of God here? You've been waiting for the money and God has been waiting for your move. In closing here, I'm not done with my sermon. <laughs> in closing here, there are people under the sound of my voice. The reason why you are not unleashed is the same reason why Peter was not unleashed. Powerlessness. You are powerless. Powerless. And ye shall receive power. The disciples were about to move to go and preach. Eh, come here. Come, PJ, come. You want to go and preach? Bele, come. Sit down. Tarry you. I know you have vision. I know you have goals. I know you have, I want to, I want to, I want to say, tarry you, Joko, Kazona. Tarry you in Jerusalem. Power makes things happen. If you don't want to plow with human strength and suffer in this world, Jesus said, I am your master. I taught you Bible. I have taught you by the living word. I have taught you. Say, don't think you qualify to go and preach because you have been with me. It's not enough. You have seen miracles. It's not enough. You have seen power by association. Because all the sick that were healed during your time, it was because I sent you forth. He said, when I am gone, when I am gone, if you don't receive it for yourself, you will make a mockery of yourself. <laughs> the people shall be willing to help you, to work with you, the people shall be willing to galvanize, gravitate to watch you in the days of what? You are not talking to me now. In the days of what, sir? Uh, you can't say it loud. In the days of what? Today, if I were you, I will not leave you until God empowers me. Father, I refuse to live here powerless. Ah, somebody say, but pastor, you know I have the power of the Holy Ghost. Hello, sir. The Bible says they were filled with the Holy Ghost in chapter 1. In chapter 3, the Bible said they were filled again. Father, fill me again. Why? Is somebody ready for what I'm about to say? Are you ready for what I'm about to say? Hello, sir. Immediately after the day of Pentecost, follow me carefully. The Bible says that when Jesus was around, they had need. Please watch this carefully. They had needs. Apostolic community had the need. Is that okay? They didn't have sufficient money. Jesus said, go to the sea, right? You will meet a fish. But for Jesus' personal need, the Bible said there were certain women that ministered to him. So he had no need. <laughs> I, I'm taking to that. So watch this carefully. Acts chapter 2, when the power of God came on them, the same people who had no money in the apostolic community, because of power, the Bible said people sold lands. They didn't ask for it. We were coming to drop. Sir, there is a dimension of power that compels resources. I have never seen a genuine man who flows in the power of God and lacks resources. Never. I've never seen one. Never. Including those, sir, who are in Onurioke. Sir, the people on Orioke who are praying on Orioke, they are so blessed financially than most of us who are in the city. Because power attracts resources. Wisdom. The Bible says because of wisdom is Solomon. The Bible says kings of the earth subscribe to him and they paid annual dues for subscribing to his wisdom. You can't be unleashed if you're powerless. 
you are going to cry to God. Is there somebody here today? Please, let me say this way. You know this meeting has been designed for you. You know I've been speaking to you all through. And you want us to pray together. Please come to the altar. Just come to the altar. Let's pray together. Just leave your seats and come to the you, Please, that is, you know that today's message has been for you. Find your way to the altar. And please, as a minister, cry to God. Father, I refuse to be powerless today. Shakatuna zebariaso. Rato vengato de asana. Elakus. Somebody's already crying to God. Thank you for watching. We hope you were blessed and richly transformed by this sermon. Join us on site and online in any of our centers globally as displayed on the screen. When we pray, there's a God who hears us. Yeah. When we pray, there's a God to answer. Yeah. When we pray, we prevail, we prosper. on all social media handles as shown on the screen. Also, don't forget to join Prophetic Prayer Hour with Rev. Sam Oye, weekdays Monday to Friday by 5.50 a.m. West African time. Join on YouTube, Facebook and Instagram at Rev. Sam Oye. Please invite your friends and family members, for with our God, all things are possible. For more inquiries, visit www.thetransformingchurch.org. We celebrate you. I'm intoxicated by the power in that name. That name is more powerful than neutron bomb. More powerful than chemotherapy. That name is more powerful than radiotherapy. I've seen the name work. One change. This is the Transforming Church International. One church making global impact.